Hey everyone, welcome back to the multiplayer FPS tutorial series, and today we're just going to implement some architecture for our weapons. So first things first, I'm going to create a new script here, and I'm going to call it item info. And in our item info script, this is going to be the base class for any information for any object we'll hold in our player's hand. In Visual Studio here, I'm just going to remove mono behavior and have it derive from scriptable object instead. While mono behavior allows scripts to be put on game objects, scriptable object allows them to be assets in your project. I'm going to remove this and all I'm going to have here is a public string item name. Next, back in Unity, I'm going to make another script and I'm going to call it gun info. And this class is going to store all the necessary information for our guns. And our gun info class is going to derive from item info. We're not going to use these methods, so we can just delete them. We're going to add a new create asset menu attribute, and we're going to have the menu name set to FPS slash new gun. This will allow us to create new gun info instances really easily in our project. Back in Unity, I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call it items. Then we're going to make a subfolder and call it guns. Now right click on the guns folder and go create FPS new gun. I'm going to name this gun 1 and in the item name field I'm going to name it gun 1 too. Let's open up our player controller prefab. Create a new empty child of your camera holder and call it item holder. For every item we want our player to be able to hold, we're going to make it a child of this item holder game object. So I'm going to make two here, one called gun 1 item and one called gun 2 item. And we're going to make a second gun scriptable object here for our gun 2. And then on both of these, I'm going to add a new script called item. Drag that in here. Alright, we can delete these methods, and then I'm going to make two variables here. Both public. A public item info, item info, and then a public game object, item game object. Alright, now back in Unity, let's assign those scriptable objects to our item scripts. And then I'm going to make a new empty game object of gun1 item, and a new empty one of gun2 item. And we're just going to call these gun1 and gun2. And these will be the actual weapons. So let's make a cube here under gun1, and this will just be a placeholder weapon. So in placeholder graphics for our gun. I'm just going to scale this down a bit and position it right next to the camera so that we can see it in game. And we're going to do that for gun 2 also. Let's make a new 3D object cube here. And make sure to disable gun 1 here so it doesn't get in our way. And let's scale that cube down a bit. I want to make it a little bit thinner so that we can tell the difference between them. Go ahead and deactivate gun 2 also. And then in our gun 1 item and gun 2 item we can assign the gun game objects here. Now let's open up our player controller script and we're going to make a few variables here. We're going to make a serialized field item array called items. Then we're going to make an int for item index and then we're going to make an int for the previous item index. Now we're going to actually start work on the equip item function. So just void equip item. Then we're going to have an integer parameter called underscore index. This method is just going to manage showing and hiding items. So let's assign underscore index to our item index variable. Then we're going to say the item index of the items array dot item game object dot set active true. And that's going to enable our item for the chosen index of our array. Now let's scroll up and set previous item index's default value to negative one. We do this because by default there's no previous item because we haven't switched yet. So let's make an if statement here. If the previous item index does not equal negative one, so we haven't switched yet, then we'll set the previous item index of our item array's game object to be not active. And finally, we'll set the previous item index to be the current item index. Now we're going to rearrange this if statement in our start method a bit by cutting this, adding an else, and pasting it in there. Then we're going to delete the exclamation point before pv.isMine. Then in the true section of the if statement, we're going to type equip item 0. This just means if we start up the game and we're the local player, we'll equip our first item in our item array. Now if we head back into Unity, let's assign the player controller's item array's values to be the gun items we just created. Now if we head over to our main menu and start up the game, 
we can see that we've equipped the first item in our item array. But we currently have no way to switch to the second item, so let's cover that now. Real quick, I'm going to go to our player controller and remove the box colliders on both of our weapons, since our guns shouldn't have any colliders on them. Head back to Visual Studio and scroll up to your update method. We're going to create a new for loop. For int i equals 0, i is smaller than items.length, i++. Plus plus. And in this for loop, we're going to check if input.getKeyDown i plus 1 dot 2 string. This just means we're going to check every number key for items we have in our item array. And if we press that key down, then we'll equip that item. And we're also going to break here so that we don't have to check any more keys. If you start up the game now, you can see that we can switch between guns by pressing 1 and 2 on our keyboard. But there's still an issue where we're able to hide both guns at once, so let's fix that. This issue is caused when we press the same button twice. So let's head back into Visual Studio and in our equip item method at the top, we'll make an if statement to check if the index property is the same as the previous item index property, and if it is, we'll return. Now if we go back into Unity and start up the game, you can see that pressing the same number twice doesn't do anything. And that's it for now. I'll see you all next time.